I want to say thank you to all of our fans out there for everything that you have done over the past five years. It is truly a humbling experience to create content for you. And how many lives we've impacted, generating over 18 million views in five years. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Please enjoy this final episode of the year with Shavo from the legendary System of a Down and the creative visionary behind 22 Red. Happy growing, and I'll see you in the next world. Coming up on the Can of Cribs podcast. So I was traveling and I thought I had zero on me. I didn't smoke there. I didn't do anything. But I came home and there was a sack in my bag. And I went through Armenia. I went through Russia. <laughs> there was a sack, like a sack in my bag of like some dank weed that I picked up somewhere. And your song will serve as like a soundtrack for them. Pretty much. That's what they're playing at all Damn. the like, halftime. They're in banging the in the stadium. Oh, dude, it's the craziest Fuck. thing to hear your song banging and everyone going crazy for it. It's like kind of performing me without performing you know and there was like placemat set with my name on it i was right to his left and another one's to his right and i met all these like the first guy to ever open a coffee shop in amsterdam was there there was like so many genetics guys there like it was just like this like collection of the elite of weed from amsterdam you know so he showed me and i said this i can rep like this could because i'm gonna smoke this i mean you know it, it had to be something i'm smoking it can't be like i'm smoking something else but i'm selling this it's i'm, I'm an honest person and I can't you know it has to be real if it's not real then I'm I don't feel comfortable I'm actually part of the culture I enjoy what we do this is something that like is inside my heart you know it's coming out from there that's why I enjoy every minute of it I'm involved I'm I'm not just a name I don't even want to use my name hence it's called 22 red not Shavo select you know um which is some of the names that everyone wanted me to use I'm like hell no dude I don't want my name involved I don't want it to be like Shavo's brand even though I want people to know but the right people it's bigger than me i i don't want to i want this to become bigger than shallow you know hey i'm nick creator of canna cribs and growers network where we have educated millions of people on how to elevate their craft i have toured some of the largest grow operations befriended the best growers and built a network of the top cannabis companies join me on this next adventure where i document history with the pioneer shaping the global cannabis industry in real time Welcome to the Canacribs Podcast. The Canacribs Podcast is brought to you by the top brands in the game. We have six categories we want to highlight to help you elevate your craft. Starting off with Cultivation by Grodan, Lighting by Horticulture Lighting Group, Nutrients by Athena, Climate Control by Quest, Post Harvest by Green Bros, and Dispensary by Trees. Thank you to these partners for helping us create this podcast and helping us bring more knowledge to the world. If you want to support the Can of Cribs podcast, head on over to the link in the description or go to growershouse.com and check out these industry leaders today. Hey, thanks for watching. Do you want your own episode of Can of Cribs? What about up to $20,000 in facility upgrades? Well, my friend, you're in luck. Sign up today for the Canna Cribs and Hawthorne sweepstakes for the chance to win. This sweepstakes ends April 2023, open to U.S. residents excluding Florida and New York, over the age of 21 and currently employed by a licensed facility. You can check out the full sweepstakes rules on the application link below. Best of luck. Well, I'll give you a little background on myself. I was born in Armenia um, in 1974. In 79, my fa my whole entire family moved um, to America, but we came through a bunch of other countries. It was really rough at the time to move from, because uh, Armenia was a republic of the Soviet Union. So it was at the time, it wasn't even its own country. Uh, we, we were... Um, we were a republic like i said so it wasn't easy uh we had to move to moscow first and then move from there to rome as wow. refugees and then from rome i moved to queens this is all happening at five years old uh moved to queens we were gonna be queens you know residents and my dad's family uh moved to la to hollywood and soon after my mom and i moved and i was an only child at the time so this is all happening in like less than six seven months uh, I ended up on North Kingsley Drive in Hollywood, um, East Hollywood. Um, from as early as I have memories, I remember music. I remember my parents always playing music. So it became kind of embedded 
in my soul. Um, I still have their old records. Like I have LPs from uh, Armenia and Russia, like the Beatles and all sorts of cool albums that, you know, are rare because they're not American print, you know. But I listen to music like that from a very early age. Um, in Hollywood, I saw a bunch of murals of like rock bands and Kiss. It was like 80, 81. So that kind of took me away. I was like, wow, you can wear makeup and sing music and, you know, and sing and play music and blow fire out of your mouth and stick your tongue out. This is the coolest thing in the world, right? <laughs> um, so it became something I looked up to, you know. Um, as time went on, I begged to have a guitar or something like that, like instrument. I, w I wanted to have one, but because I had Im immigrant parents, they kind of saw that as like, oh, shit, he might become um, a starving musician, mm -hmm. artist. You know what I mean? They cared about So, you. yeah. So, they, you know, of course, they, they wanted me the old school way to be a doctor, a lawyer or something like that. Um, around 10, 11 years old, my grandmother bought me a guitar. She kind of went behind everybody <laughs> and, and got me an old Kramer XL, XL2, actually. And I just took that and it was like my prized possession. I jammed, I played. They tried getting me lessons, but the guy giving me lessons was slow. And I was faster than him. I was learning stuff prior from magazines and stuff. And he would come and he was like, this is your third chord. And I'd be like, well, I'm on the seventh at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, so let's speed it up. After two weeks, I just kind of did my own thing. And I just played music for just, I taught myself by ear to play. Um... Around high school, I started forming bands. Right after high school, um, I was looking for, you know, a guitar. I mean, a bass player, and it was really rough to find a bass because I was doing guitar. So I, it was, it was tough to find a bass player, and because um, it was either someone was brand new or they were virtuosos and they were trying to compete against the guitar player. And mm -hmm. the way I see a bass is like meat and potatoes. You know, you got to be with groove and kind of keep the bottom of the song. It's there always. If it's out, you know, it's there, it's out, but it's not something that's in the forefront, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and no one was really doing that. So I just kind of picked up, I traded in my old guitar and bass and, and guitar amp for a bass and a bass amp. And, uh, I joined a band, found it on, you know, found them on in the recycler, you know, classifieds back then. It was like the Craigslist. And uh, I was at a studio complex in Burbank playing with them. And I noticed some old friends, some people, I, acquaintances I knew from my old private Armenian school that I went to in Hollywood. And um, they were, they sounded really good. And it was, I loved hanging out with them. And they were called Soil. And uh, one thing led to another, their bass player left, their drummer left. I was kind of managing them at the time. They asked me to manage. They're like, you're really good. You can speak well. You know, you're a go-getter. You you know, you, you grind. Uh, can you manage us? I was like, sure, dude, I'll do whatever. I was always open to new opportunities, you know. I could really do anything with them. Like I said, their bass player left, drummer left. And I kind of, they asked me to join. I said, I'd rather not join. I'd rather reform. Let's start a new entity. Let's start something brand new. So that's when System of a Down was born. Wow. So that's how it all started. Yeah, that's a, a beautiful story. And uh, those bandmates of yours, you guys um, had similar backgrounds, different backgrounds. Um, I mean, different and similar at the same time. We all were, you know, we, uh, we all had an Armenian heritage. Actually, the drummer of Soil was this Hawaiian dude. So it wasn't like a prerequisite to be Armenian. It's just We just happened to be. It was a coincidence yeah. that the new guy that came in was also Armenian. We weren't looking. We tried out a lot of drummers. We were, we went through like eight drummers until we locked John down. We actually had another drummer prior to John that was with us for the first couple of years. But then right before we had like our main show with Rick Rubin there and all that stuff. Um, he shattered his wrist, Oof. he punched the wall. Um, things didn't work out for him. They said he can't play for a couple of years. We had John playing in another band in, in our studio complex, asked him if he'd fill in. He just kind of stayed. He's, he fit the mold perfectly, you know? Yeah. And so the rest is history. Yeah. Would you say the path through immigration fueled those early lyrics and, and drive that you guys had? Probably that. See, I don't write lyrics. I mean, I write, but I don't write lyrics for systems. Surge and Darren do. Uh, at, in in the beginning, it was mostly Surge, um, and but our paths are a little different. He was born in Lebanon, and he did go through a lot himself. It was just different, but we all kind of shared the whole. 
you know, Armenians, there's been the genocide and it's still going on right now with yeah. Azerbaijan attacking, killing people and blaming us for it. It's like, it's crazy. We have a big ass country that the world, not the world, but like the superpowers kind of fund because they have a lot of oil. And they're saying that this little country with 2 million to 3 million people are attacking them. I mean, that's just not, it's weird. And our people are dying, not theirs. Um, but the world kind of sees it as, oh, it's a conflict. It ain't no conflict. We're getting attacked. Like that's what's happening right now. Uh, but they'd rather pay attention to Ukraine, which is great to do that. But it's like, if you're going to do that, why don't you pay attention to the other mm. nightmares going on around the world that we're screaming at you about? Our people are dying. Our kids are dying, you know? Anyway, so that happened in 1915, perpetrated by the Ottoman Empire. We had 2 million people and they killed off 1.5 million of them. So 500,000 people had to escape and live and survive for me and my band to be alive and to be able to tell you this in 2022, right? So... It's kind of sad, but it's heroic. You know, it's kind of one of those like, you know, survival yeah. stories. And uh, so that being taught to us from a young age, I think was another common bond that kind of like made us more relatable to each other. Yeah. Also, we all love music and we all love different types of music. Um, we had that variety. Like we don't like genres we like all music if it's good you know like i don't like people that say oh i'm only into rap or i'm only into heavy metal it's like dude there's great rap there's great metal there's great yeah. rap. there's also terrible rap there's also terrible metal you know so i'm I'm all about it man if it's good i've been listening to it and that's what kind of we all felt and feel and that inspired the music inspired the the attitude the vibe the message you know okay. free thinkers are dangerous that was our first uh slogan <laughs> or you know something yeah. we came up with free thinkers are I dangerous love that. it's a different uh, era right now um, yeah. especially you know perpetuated through social media and um i was actually just talking uh with my crew right before this uh interview about the state of censorship and how you know private companies are censoring free speech which is a public right uh, so yeah, weird, weird time that we're living in. Um, I'm sure growing up in Hollywood, you were around a lot of good weed. So how <laughs> how did this beautiful plant enter your life early on? So honestly, I didn't smoke weed in Hollywood. I um, I moved out of Hollywood when I was 17 and I didn't smoke as a kid. My parents always, the way they saw weed was like cocaine and heroin there was no difference you know they didn't see it as a medicine they didn't see it as with all the good stuff that it does have so i kind of was raised that way but growing up i went to a concert here i went to a thing there and i kind of saw it did it i was interested in it my friends did it i didn't do it for a while and then at this guns and roses metallica concert in pasadena at rose bowl i smoked one i asked that was it, it was going around and i took a hit and didn't really do all the craziness i thought it was going to do you know so I occasionally smoke, but I became an avid smoker when System of a Down started and because Darren, my guitar player, was a smoker and him and I kind of manifested this whole thing. We like would sit together before we even had that other drummer. We would sit around. We had a studio. We would get some weed from Alvarado. Uh, it was stress, but we whatever. That's all we can afford. We all lived at home with our folks, you know, um, and went to school and then had jobs and played music. Uh, so we would sit around, smoke weed, and talk about how great system is going to be and what we have to do to make it happen. And uh, I smoked every day after that. And then the good weed came around, the bubbles, the OGs, and um, we would drive all the way to South Central, like from North Hollywood and Burbank at Glendale area. We would drive to like San Pedro and 53rd and really crazy areas of like gang and whatever. But we just would do it because they had the cush there, and that's how the connoisseur side of me started but again there was it wasn't what it is now of course right where there's menus and there's hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of genetics um the first time i was really i've told the story before but i'm gonna say it again first time i actually felt that and like tasted all that was when i in 99 i think 2000 we went to amsterdam with system we we were touring and a friend of mine had given me a number and said, this dude is the real deal. When you get there, forget the bulldog, forget those little coffee shops, hit this guy up. This guy will have the best. I said, okay. We got there like 5 a.m. So I hit the guy up. 
I woke him up. He's like, who's this? <laughs> I told him who I was, didn't know nothing. He's like, listen, hit me up at like 10 a.m. I'm like, fine. I hit him up at 10 a.m. I guess he had done some research. He's like, where are you staying? I said, I told him the hotel's name. He's like, damn, I'm right under you. Just go downstairs, make a right. That's my shop. And it was like, coincidentally, we were staying right by his shop. And it was the greenhouse seed company. It was Aryan, who's like the strain hunter. Like, oh, yeah. I, I just kind of fell into this. And uh, they they had everything ready. They're the best, by the way. I just want to say, like, they made me. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't be such a connoisseur. Um, and I wouldn't know so much about it because after I met them and I saw those menus and then they actually gave me like two ounces of like the balm and I saw a menu and it was like 30 strains I was like bro can you just give me like a little bit of everything and that's when they looked at me a different way they said wow you really like this shit I said dude I need to test them all I want to try them all I want to go on my balcony and I'll go on a little pipe Mm -hmm. Uh, and I said I'm just going to taste each one and sit there and relax and so they got excited and did that for me um that weekend we were leaving and they had the harvest tasting of all their strains new strains and also was the high times cup was happening in amsterdam um so but we were going to leave so they moved their tasting up invited me to the tasting so i went up to their apartment above the shop and it was this like thanksgiving table with like 30 bowls big bowls wow with with flour in it with numbers on it without any names and there was like placemats set with my name on it i was right to his left and another one's to his right and i met all these like the first guy to ever open a coffee shop in amsterdam was there there was like so many genetics guys there like it was just like this like collection of the elite of weed from amsterdam you know um i had the honor of being with them and we started like 4 p.m Next thing you know, it's 1 a.m. <laughs> and we're just still going. <laughs> we had to put stuff in Tupperware and take it with us after that because they wanted just to go like to bed. Thanksgiving. We were, yeah, we were in like candy land for us. It was like hitting a candy store. They do this always. So they're like, you know what? We're going <clears> to <throat> end it now. <laughs> Give you guys everything you want. Just go to your hotel and smoke more. So we did that. But um, you can actually pull that up. I think it's like if you look up on YouTube system smoking weed or system getting high, I think there's like a little... Um, you know, like a blurb of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what did it, bro. After I saw the white widows and the super silvers and the super lemons and the Aryans and the Hawaiian snows and all the Afghan stuff they had, and it was just ridiculous. I mean, just it was everything I've read about, I've heard about, I've seen in high times in front of me. And I, I and, and I had carte blanche, you know. So that's what made me the connoisseur I was. But then when I came back the OGs were happening and the Bubba's in the church, uh, which is, I think an old Bubba. And so I couldn't go to Alvarado anymore. It was now it's another level, you know, we, we leveled up. So, and, and then I found people that kind of delivered it to me. Um, it was just, it, it, it was, it was like a progression. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. At, at what point did cannabis start influencing your music and your art direction? From day one, I think, um, yeah. after I kind of started smoking more, it does open your mind up. Not the not the indicas too much, but anything that was a hybrid sativa dominant or a sativa dominant sativas were kind of made me more creative. I was always a creative person, though. So it wasn't like I relied on it. I, I didn't rely on any drugs or alcohol or anything else to become creative. Sometimes they do um, unblock creative blocks. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And just help make connections faster. Yeah, like I, I write know. music daily, bro. Even till today, you know, and I I, I, I like going in sober. I, I like sometimes smoking and seeing what comes up there, you know. Maybe I'll have a drink at some point, you know, sometimes. But it's just few and far. Sometimes I've noticed that I'm better a certain way, you mm-hmm. know. And um, cannabis does help, man. And it's uh, th- that's kind of part of our 22 Red um thing where we, we, we talk about it being we we uh we honor the creative you know and try to do stuff for the creative i love that i mean it's it's by us for us 
So at what point do you go from Shavo system of a down to now Shavo running 22 red? Um, since California became medically, you know, medical, I've been getting uh, asked by a bunch of people, like, let's have a Shavo strain, let's have a Shavo brand. And I just didn't, I was an artist, you know, I just wanted to smoke it. You grow it, you do your thing. I admired it. I admired the growers. I really, you know, I checked out a lot of grows. I was around it. A bunch of friends of mine were growing. Um, but I just liked being the, the guy that was a connoisseur and smoking it, you know, and making my music. And also I didn't know exactly like what the business was going to be like, you know, I just, I wasn't so, so much a businessman when it came to like starting businesses more. I, that happened later in life. I was content being an artist and handling music and art business you know um like the management process and all that stuff right um but in like 2017 i think 2016 17 i was getting more curious about it and that's when an old friend of mine said you should come check out mark grow and i knew he grew forever it was surreal yields my boy sean um who's a 22 red partner yeah. as well him and i started to this together well he's the reason why it became cannabis so i was gonna start i'll start here so another good friend of mine uh who's like my oldest friend was since we were like six years old um he wanted to do a brand with me he he manufactures clothing so you know we all got a style i was like we can do this we can do like kind of a lifestyle brand and mm -hmm. minimal branding you know the way we are doing it with 22 and um then it was just gonna be two partners then when sean said it was the same time where sean said hey you should come and check out some of the grows that i put together and um handling when i went and i saw it was just a mind blown it, it was it down. yeah dude like it's it was the model that everyone is kind of going with right now from cali and now the rest of america and the world um Steezy and Nation. i was yeah dude and uh well he took it from there to there you know he mm -hmm. made stizzy that you know it's not like stizzy had that already you know right um so what happened was yeah, I think you guys had him on the show, yep. right? I filmed you his what garden, he does. and I That's did the an guy, interview bro. with him. So, Sean's yeah, yeah, the man. he's the man. Sean's the guy. So he showed me, and I said, this I can rep. Like, this could, because I'm going to smoke this. I mean, you know, it, <laughs> it had to be something I'm smoking. It can't be like, I'm smoking something else, but I'm selling this. It's I'm, I'm an honest person, and I can't, you know, it has to be real. If it's not real, then I'm, I don't feel comfortable. And um, so that's where we became three partners. And 22 Red was born. We, we So we kept the lifestyle process, you know, the whole thing about it being a lifestyle, which is the art, the music, the fashion. But we added cannabis. It's just the last few years, cannabis took over. It, <laughs> it became more <laughs> cannabis, less lifestyle. But now we're bringing that back now. So, I mean, I mean it's a brand. It's a growing brand. We are, we're building a brand. We still don't really profit. We kind of put everything back in. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe in building it strong and doing it right. Uh, luckily, I make money elsewhere. I'm, still a musician and i make i write music and play and so that takes care of me so i can fully just do this from passion and build mm -hmm. it right um which is the reason why sean went to stizzy as well because he does this for a living he doesn't have that other you know so right. we couldn't have him go broke on us because he's being good you know and being a partner so we said of course you can go do something else but as long as you're loyal to 22 he's always loyal to 22 so and that's kind of part of his uh deal you know with steezy so he became and he went and became the lead cultivator partner cultivation partner to steezy and look what happened like the dude just blew it up blew it up 180 and that's what i admire about him man he's that innovator he's an artist when it comes to what he does and his passion is as strong as my passion is to everything else i do everything i do so i'm, I'm attracted to passionate people you mm -hmm. know it's and an energy. Um, Right. Yeah, dude. I mean, when he, he talks, you could tell he loves what he's doing. You yeah. Know? And he knows what he's doing. He knows about it. He ain't just like guessing. People look at him, try to do what he's doing now while he's already got the next year planned. And it's different. He's an innovator. He'll do things. He's always above st one step above. Uh, I just saw his new shit that he's coming up with. And it's ridiculous. Like you should see the irrigation system he came up with. It's crazy. It's a maze. I don't know. You've seen it, right? Yeah. Yeah. We you filmed this facility. It's, it's constantly evolving, right? Constantly I, there's definitely going to be a part two, part three. 
And I I remember in my interview with Sean, he was kind of telling me early on, um, Kenji took him under his wing. And Kenji, of course, Be Real, Cypress Hill, similar cannabis connoisseur, musician, group, you know, kind of with the culture. I think it was more he admired Kenji. I don't know if Kenji took him under his wing. I think he admired him because when I, because I knew Be Real really well and I met Kenji through Be Real and it uh-huh. was like this meeting that had to happen. I remember that. Some, I, I don't, I don't quote me on that exactly, but I feel like Sean was doing his thing, but yeah. I think he was looking up to people that were also doing it, doing it right. Kenji's an OG dude. Kenji's one of my favorites out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I was to choose two, it would be Kenji and him, you know, and yeah. then there's Super others stuff. that I've seen and they do, they, they do it right. There's certain people that are doing it right. They're doing it for the right reasons. They're not like the new corporate people coming in, putting the grow together, putting all this money in, and then just creating mids for the re- for the world. It's terrible. This, these guys like care you. about everything. They don't just care about the way it looks care about the way it smokes the way it tastes the way it grows the the, the, the smell, organic you know the, nose, the smell nose, the nose everything. the turps it's so important it's made me more of a connoisseur than i already was yeah. you know so um because now i see how what the process is i'm there daily bro like i went in and i'm learning too like the last three four years i've been learning i i'm nowhere near where they're at but i i watch and learn and that's the best experience you can get for anything you know um so I'm not saying I'm going to be a grower. I'm just saying how much I admire it. And if I'm going to do this part of it, I have to know all parts of it. You know? Yeah. I believe in that. I don't well, that's how your brain be. works, right? Like you want to yeah. know how every single system works because it's all exactly. connected. Exactly. Exactly. And um, so, yeah, man, Kenji is a, is an OG and blessed to know him, man. Uh, he's also a great dude. You know, he's yeah. just like, a fr- he's a really good friend of mine. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. gonna be filming their grow someday. Um, we we tried. Oh, yeah, you will. We were close to it and didn't work out with timing, but that's how production works, right? So of the 22 Red flagship cultivation is in California. It was yes, it was. We went into a different model now, where okay. we're uh, we because we have our genetics now, and we're constantly creating new ones or finding new ones. Mm-hmm. I, I curate them. We we've done pheno hunts we're still doing it with certain geneticists but we're also curating it if i find something that exists that is one of a kind but it hasn't gone out yet i'll claim it sometimes you know for the right with the right person um like i said i'm a curator i can't you know i'm not just a creator um, i love certain things that are already out there i can't lie about that yeah. like we've had a mimosa you know and i call it mimosa but i'm not going to change the name like most people do it um but it's if i like it i'm going to have it on my roster, you know, my, my, my artillery, you know? Yeah. What's that, so, what's that pheno hunt process look like and kind of setting the menu? I mean, I mean, you find someone that does it well. Like I have seeds I've collected through my like touring from around the oh, world. And I sometimes, damn. yeah, dude, like you get I still access. have a lot, dude. I, I don't want to say too much. Of course. Yes. I've collected a lot. I have, I still have a lot. There's a lot to go through. People say it's like saying it's all done. It's all hybrid. Yeah. No. That's what they're doing here. It's you not have done. A it's like saying it, bro. It's like saying every song is written. No, it's not. There's still a lot of music to write. So I feel like I treat every strain like a song, like a kid. And I look at them as babies. And, um, so there's certain people I work with and I s- sometimes work with their seeds and do the process. You know, we, takes a year year and a half usually to get one one but uh, we you know it's a long process i don't want to go too deep about it but i have so many new seeds i really need to pop soon so um and then now we're in three states so it's easier to spread them out now you know so there's some new ones there's i just have some really cool mimosa i really like a lot of people don't like it i personally like it because it's light and it keeps me daily i I can smoke all i can smoke all day yeah and it doesn't whack me out where I want to sit around. You know, I'm I'm a grind. I, I work a lot. I'm, yeah. I'm up, up early and I'm sleeping late. So, Coffee and mimosa, baby. <laughs> bro, you know, <laughs> yep. constant, you know. Yep. So, so, and I, like I said, it has to be something I enjoy and I do. And I, I have a good way of popping stuff out, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, if I like it, I, I market it. I'm also the chief marketing officer at 22 Red. So mm. that's something I've done with system my whole life. I've done all the branding the marketing i've done so i doing the same with 22 wow you know yeah so to answer your question i work with a lot of geneticists i work with a lot of growers um 
and we work off of either a seed he has, he or she has, and or what I have, and we go from there. You know, and we just pick the best ones. I I also sometimes pick phenos of certain, like for example, gelato has a hundreds of thousands of phenos, right? It's like, and I usually use gelato as the last name because it's like kids, you know, you they keep the same last name, but you don't name every kid John or Jill, you know, or Jane, you know, uh, the kids have names, so. Hmm. I love tasting different phenos of certain flowers I enjoy. And mimosa, you know, it's got the purple punch and the orange cookies, right? And some of them have more orange cookies. Some of them have more pro. So I try to see where that is also kind of like, that's the process I enjoy too, of like tasting them all and picking out who, which parent was more dominant, you know? Mm -hmm. That that goes for all flower, not just mimosa. I'm just talking about mimosa right now. Yeah, uh, It's not my favorite, but it's something I enjoy, you know? I enjoy a lot of different strains. Yeah, you're truly uh, an architect. Um, oh, yeah. You know, kind of at the the ground floor, getting to pick what goes into the, your your build of that cultivar. Uh, yeah, bro. A lot special. of people think I'm just some celebrity guy that got into weed, and that's not the case at all. I think being a celebrity brand is kind of a handicap in today's world because of most how most celebrity celebrities handle their brands, where they just kind of give their name. And then anyone puts whatever they want in their jar and sell it for a profit. That's not what I'm doing. I'm actually part of the culture. I enjoy what we do. This is something that like is inside my heart. You know, it's coming out from there. That's why I enjoy every minute of it. I'm involved. I'm I'm not just a name. I don't even want to use my name. Hence, it's called Twenty Two Red, not Shavo Select. You know, um, which is some of the names that everyone wanted me to use. I'm like, yep. hell no, dude. I don't want my name involved. I don't want it to be like Shavo's brand. Even though I want people to know, but the right people it's bigger than me. I, I don't want to, I want this to become bigger than Shavo, you know? Hey, thanks for watching the episode today. Did you know that we have a consulting division? We actually help design and build some of the most productive commercial facilities that you see right here on YouTube. If you need help building, retrofitting, or optimizing your commercial grow, hit that link in the description below and fill out the form. Now back to the episode. You are so right. I kind of see two categories when it comes to a celebrity cannabis brand. There's the a little bit uh, easier, lower lift, attaching a brand like your personal name or, you know, brand to it um, and contracting it out. And other people are setting the menu, putting the product in a jar, vape, cart, gummy, etc. And you're more of a, a, a public figure, right? That's kind of category one. And I think that's mm -hmm. probably the majority of celebrity cannabis brands that I've personally seen. 90%, 90%. And then the second category, that's where you come in, my friend. You are setting the menu. You are taking the trips out there. You mm -hmm. are a connoisseur and bringing your passion for what you do as a career to the table to help influence. And Thank you. that I want to see more of. Um, you guys I are agree. doing it. There's other people doing, doing it, but... I want to see more of that. There are a ton too, of celebrities in the world that they smoke every day. They could be an athlete. They could be a musician. They could be a producer, you know, songwriter. I mean, you name it. Um, and I don't know, like, what what do you think is probably holding them back from getting in? Uh, I don't know if anything's holding them back. I just think that they're, it's, um, you know, people have, people like to make money. Yeah. I think it's that because the way I'm doing it, it's, it's not like the profit is not, it, it's a long build. It, it's a long term plan. It's not a quick come in and out, you know, and um, people don't have time, bro. You know, luckily, I mean, I use like, I turn lemons into lemonade. So my band's not touring as much. So I'm using that time to do this full time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure that I'll come back and then I'll have, but I've, I'm building something that can take off on its own at some point. But I don't know. I, I don't know the reason, bro. I'll be honest with you. I think money is a big part of it. Corporate shit is a big part of it. And most um, celebrity brands are run by corporate people um, who want to take over the celebrity uh, genre, you know? And then they take like seven celebrities and they have 20 strains. They buy and sell and they put names on it. You know, it's the same strain in everyone's jar, just a different name. That's yeah. what they do, bro. You know, I'm I'm more about like having your own, you know, and creating your own and having a legacy. But it's different, bro. It's a different, it's a different stroke for different folk, you know. 
So, I mean, be real is the same too, but that guy's a fucking hard ass too. He, he knows his shit, you know? Oh yeah. Through and through. He smokes all day, every day. He knows his shit. He's a loyal, real dude, the real connoisseur. So there's certain, like I said, there's a certain small percentage of celebs that, uh, that happen to be a celebrity who love the plant. Yeah. I just saw a, a post from Be Real. I think he was in like Chile or Argentina, somewhere like that. And he's like rapping in Spanish. They're they're singing his songs. He's smoking. They're smoking. I mean, we still mm -hmm. have yet to open up the world to this plant. There are There's countries just coming online. I, I'm sure you've probably seen that while touring. Um, there's oh, a lot of countries that don't have the legal system that we have up here, but the the fans are there. The, the fans are there, there, but the government of a bunch of countries, a lot of countries still see it as taboo. And there's like, like a lot of bad things that can happen to you, man. If, if you get caught with it, I mean, I've been, I tour, you know, I've toured a lot with risk at all so I can have it with me. So I don't, you know what I mean? Cause there's certain countries that don't allow it at all. You can have a seed and go to jail. Yeah. You, you know, you can have like, is it culture? Belief. Like, why is that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's probably culture. It's probably because they're kind of not as uh, open and not as advanced, progressive, you know? You know, certain things I'm into progressiveness, certain things I'm old school, you know? And this is something I feel like um, people should open their minds for. It's really good for finances as well for the country, you know? It opens up a lot of jobs and it opens up a lot of new uh, avenues of um, funding yeah. things. Absolutely. Yeah. Hospitals, um, schools, yeah, roads, dude. education. Everything. Education, bro. Yeah, that's completely correct. Like there's countries like I've been to where, uh, for example, Japan, um, they sell pipes. They have like head shops. But if you ask for what's inside, they look at you like you just murdered someone or you asked Damn. about something crazy. Like I just asked for heroin or coke. You know, it's just like, you know, you're buying a pipe. I mean, there. I, I remember there was a spot where mushrooms were sold in a, like just right there. Um, but if you ask for weed, they looked at you like you're crazy or something, you know, like, I don't, I don't know you, you know, um, then there's countries like Greece where it's all stress. You know, I remember we were still smoking, like we take a hit and our head would hurt and like, oh, but it's, you know, I'm, I think I got a head change. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I, th I think it was something happened, but the chasing, pain, the high. chasing that high, bro. Um, I smoked seeds and <laughs> so much shit has gone down around Sticks the world. And stems, and yeah. Yeah. There's like countries I've been through, didn't know I had a bad. For example, you see what's happening in Russia where they like. With Britney uh, coming in? Yeah, dude. So With that so, vape cart? Bro, let me tell you what happened to me and I didn't, it didn't happen. I mean, I got lucky. Yeah. So I was traveling and I thought I had zero on me. I didn't smoke there. I didn't do anything. But I came home and there was a sack in my bag. And I went through Armenia. I went through Russia. <laughs> there was a sack, like a sack in my bag of like some dank weed that I picked up somewhere. And it was just like under everything and it didn't get found, bro. And then, oh, here's a, here's a quick story. One time we're in Italy. We land in Italy, Milan. And I had nothing on me. I had cleared everything up. Because I know they're rough there, man. Um, and I get off the airport. I get my, I mean, the airplane. I get my bags from baggage claim. And I'm going through customs. And we're walking. And a dog was, from the, I didn't even see a dog, but I heard a bark. And they pulled me. I was like, whoa. They oh. pulled me so fast. It was like no one really saw me get pulled. So here's the bass player is missing. <laughs> oh, they shit. put me in this little room, grab my bags. They're yelling at me in Italian. They're screaming at me. They're, I'm like what bro i have nothing they're going through all my vitamins they're going through like aspirin or whatever i had because when you go on tour you want to kind of have like your pepto your every, anything Everything. like something happens you want to have it right you're in another country your yeah stomach yeah stomach issues whatever allergy medicine you want to have they're going through every pill they're going through every like capsule there we know you have it they're leaving me alone there's camera lights on i'm like these guys are thinking i'm gonna go jack you know i don't i really had nothing on me bro so after two and a half hours in this little room, this interrogation room, uh, I thought they were going to cavity search my ass, but I really like, pardon the pun, but I really thought they were going there. Um, <laughs> they didn't. And then they let me go. And I walked out and the guys are in the bus smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> it was my tour manager who walked ahead of me, had it duct taped to his like leg or something. 
and, uh, and the dog whiffed that and thought it was you. Whiffed that and thought it was me and took me. I mean, luckily, or else we would be out of tour manager, and that's not good when you're on tour. I'm not <laughs> saying which tour manager it was. <laughs> I'm not saying nothing, but this th- this happened, and it's, I think I'll have this memory for the. It's kind of traumatizing. They were, they were screaming at me in Italian. I didn't understand what they were saying, but I knew they were just, they were, they were looking for. It. Yeah, I'm like fucking. I, have, I don't have nothing, bro. Like stop. I want to go. I've already been on a long flight. Like I'm done. Like you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was funny. Damn, and yeah. and nowadays you guys are just chilling. Like you'll you'll go on tour when you go on tour. But right now, yeah, you guys pretty are much enjoying fam, building businesses, just kicking it. Pretty much, I really love music. I love what we do. It's not my decision. I would tour all day. I would make music and tour all day. It's just it takes four to tango. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Or to f- four of us to do it, and one of us isn't on the same page at the moment. You know, yeah. so we have to respect and do what we do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't force anyone to get on stage. You can't be like, you're getting on, bro. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, uh, it is what it is. That you know? shows I've the love and respect, though. You need to have it, bro. It's you know, you need to have right it there. to make it good, you know? So, um, yeah, we're chilling at the moment. We've got some stuff coming up. Um, but it's few and far, which I think makes it more rare and kind of cool. So that's where we're going through. We're going through this minute of like, if you want to see us, you got to go to those specific ones. And we're not like touring the world. And we're not doing that for for a second, you know. Um, Serge also has a couple of back issues going on. So, you know, I don't want to mess that up. Yeah. You know, when he's ready, we'll do it. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. That, Like I said, lemons to lemonade. I fill my time up. I have north kingsley coming up which is this uh side project i started a little while ago and a full-length album will be dropping soon uh it's heavier it's a it's a total evolution like we started off kind of hip-hoppy rocky and we've turned into this heavy driven guitar bass screamo crazy dude growling. i love that name yeah it's it's the that street i grew up on ass. in hollywood north kingsley i grew up on north kingsley drive and it's where i saw my first everything you know and so it kind of was like, what do you, I always n- name things I'm in with something I can relate to, not just out of the blue. Oh, it sounds good. It's something that means a lot to me and I can mm-hmm. talk about it forever that, you know, and then I started an- another new project uh, for next year. It's kind of, th- okay, North Kings is more experimental and the other project is pretty much like what system should be doing kind of, kind of heavy, like modern, more modern drops, heavy shit. Um, what people expect me to do you know north kingsley they don't expect me to do that so i have a lot of system fans saying um oh yeah but it's not system I'm like yeah i know it's not system it's me doing it with other other guys you know uh this new thing i'm doing is more like what those people are going to be excited to hear yeah. and i'll talk about that more when it's closer i really want to drop north kingsley and see what people think of this experimental shit that i came up with i'm so down for that i remember yeah. Growing up and to this day, one of my favorite songs is Ariel's. Just oh, that, hell yeah. Thank that you. fucking beginning riff, man. It it just move. I get goosebumps. Like if Thank I you. ever need to just like get in the fucking mode, the zone, I put mm-hmm. on Ariel's. Oh, dude. And and that's one of our mellow ones. Yeah, it is. But it's yeah, it, you know what I'm saying. But, but that's, hey, that's variety. the the calm right like you're just it's before the storm before the war before the fight whatever is about to happen you know i like how you put that it's just that makes sense yeah fucking love that makes sense see it's the same with flower i feel like you need all sorts of variety you shouldn't just have the hybrids or just the ogs or just the indicas i think if you have a little bit of everything it's like putting a good album together i always relate everything i do with that because that's kind of what we started system really young i got into it like i was 21 so it's kind of been my like w- back of my mind. Everything I go back to is how I see how I saw things back then. Is kind of how I relate to things mm-hmm. I do now. So it's filter it, on it, the world. Yeah, it's worked before. It it always works. Kind of it's like don't fix what's not broken. You know, kind of thing. So I see it that way. But I'm really looking forward to the world hearing all this new stuff I've been doing. I've been really inspired lately um, to like create more, and I've been doing it. I haven't stopped. I have a studio and I work with different people. Just did that track for LAFC with Cypress. We're just talking about Be Real. Yeah. And uh, so DJ Flick and I are big LAFC fans. We're, uh, you know, the soccer team from LA, the second one, the one that's young, five years old. And um, 
I've, I've been going to all the matches and him and I, and he did the first anthem and then they want, they were going to do a second one. They asked me if I want to come in. I said, fuck yeah, dude. I mean, how can I say no to anything? I love to collaborate with people, by the way. So, you know, whatever genre it is. And I went to a studio. We came up with this banger vibe. And then we're like, who, who, who gets to spit on this? And then I said, dude, why not get entire Cypress Hill on this? Not just B, just everybody. It would be a really cool vibe, you know? Mm -hmm. So I called Sen, I called B, and I called Bo, and it just, everyone was completely down. And it happened quick. It's a short thing. It's just like a quick um, hype track for the team. And right when we dropped it, they went into playoffs as the number one team in the MLS. Damn. Which is another great thing. Yeah, so it's a great pusher. Like, they listen to a song written by people they admire, written about them. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good, you know, inspirational thing. You know what I mean? So let's see where they go. The playoffs are starting next week. This week, actually, coming up. So LAFC. Yeah, let's go. I got to tell you, man, I, I live in uh, Guadalajara, Mexico, Jalisco. Okay. My first football match in my entire life was Atlas winning this most recent championship. Oof. And I'm in the crowd, literally stadium shaking, everyone singing the same song. Bro, how great is that feeling, Fuck. bro? And I'm telling There's you, in America, like it. it hasn't been like that. I know we're not America's. That's why I just wasn't following American soccer slash football. You know, I wasn't following yeah. it. And once I went to the match, because we played the Bank of California, which is their stadium. But prior to playing it, they invited me to a match a year and a half ago. I went and it was infectious, bro. I was just like, you know, I love movement. being in front of an audience. It felt like the LA team. I mean, the three, two, five, twos, that, that's their bank. Like the supporters, the supporters are intense in LA. Yep. You know, we have two teams. We have Galaxy and LAFC. The LAFC fans are just like, it's a gang, bro. It's like a, you know, it's a cult. It's a cult. That's a better word. It's like you either know and you love it or you don't know. You haven't been. And once I bring anybody, I've taken everyone from like from Everlast to the Stizzy people. Just anyone I take in and they're just from my wife to my kids. Like they're just at all in awe and saying, anytime you got an extra ticket, I'm coming with you. You know, it's just one of those things, yeah. you know. And um, after that, I kind of became more of a fan of the team and learning who's in and who's not and who's going out and who's who's being you know brought into the team and we got some really good players and the chemistry is hot so and your song will serve as like a soundtrack for them pretty much that's what they're playing at all Damn. the like, halftime they're in banging the it in the stadium oh dude it's the craziest Fuck. thing to hear your song banging and everyone going crazy for it it's like kind of performing without performing you know Wow. It's a really cool feeling, bro. Oh, my God. It's called Repping the City. Repping yeah. the City. Can we hear it on Spotify and other streaming yeah, yeah, platforms? Yeah, it's all over yeah. Spotify. I, I, I have a DSP now because I've always been with System of North Kingsley, but I started my own. So you could go on my Shava one or you could just put in Repping the City. There's also a video we just dropped on Monday um, wow. for it. So you could go watch the video with us in Cyprus and DJ Flick. That dude's a great producer, by the way, DJ Flick. Ridiculous. Um, underrated. You know, he should be like... Pfft, and he will, he will. The dude's really hard ass, really good guy. Yeah. You know, so just go check it out, listen to it. You know, it's like I said, it's a hype track. It's not about anything else but hyping people yeah, up. Yeah, just you know? getting out of your seat, getting it going. Yeah, yeah, cheering. yeah, yeah. I love that. I mean, it gets the people going. It's provocative. Pretty much. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching the episode today. Did you know that we have a consulting division? We actually help design and build some of the most productive commercial facilities that you see right here on YouTube. If you need help building, retrofitting, or optimizing your commercial grow, hit that link in the description below and fill out the form. Now back to the episode. <laughs> so let's talk about 22 Red expansion. You guys are holding mm -hmm. it down in Cali. You guys are also out in Nevada, Arizona. Um, is that kind of the the future plan? Just bringing this herb to people across the country, maybe even the world. I would love that, and yes, it's a world scheme plan. You know, a global thing. Um, but I believe in the market's down right now, so I really just want to build in the three states we're building in. Yeah, to expand at the moment would be a wrong move for us. I think someone else can do it. If we had a lot, if we had hundreds of millions of dollars back in us, that could be it's the expensive. thing, but it's expensive, bro, to do all that. So, so, um, with our new model, we are able to expand and we did, we are in three States. Like I said, Cali, we're with different distributors and different growers, but it's our genetics. 
and it's grown our way. That's where Sean comes in. He goes and consults and says, this is how it's done. This is what it is. This is what you need to do. And they do it. We just partnered with an amazing grow though in Nevada, a new grow. We, it's a new partner. And um, they're really amazing where we didn't have to tell them what, where to go and what to do. They just got, they already had it. So I'm looking forward to that drop. It's going to be in spring of this year, of the coming year. Uh, we'll be revamping Nevada because I wasn't happy with the way the cultivation was going uh, prior. So I kind of pulled out. We're still in there, but it's not the new stuff. I have a new genetics coming. I have 10 new strains dropping in Las Vegas by early summer. Um, probably two, three of them will come in for a pre-launch in April, May. And then hopefully by July, we'll have all 10 Dude, it's like an Going album. You're dropping singles. Pretty much like a, we're dropping albums. I bro. Love we're dropping it. two singles prior to the I'm doing like I said, I yes. do things the way I've learned I to see do it. albums and stuff. Yeah. And uh Arizona, uh, we've been using other people's grows, growing our genetics, but we have a new flagship um grow coming online by December. Okay. A huge one. Not not huge. When Out I say Phoenix, huge, I don't mean or? like the massive. Uh it's in the Phoenix um area. Yeah. Um, not exactly. I don't, I'm, I'm not familiar with the, it's the biggest with the, city. So it's huge, one of the boroughs. Yeah. <laughs> it's huge. It's one of the boroughs. Um, and um, we've already sent some flour. It's already, they're starting, you know, but it, it needs a couple of runs before we know it's good enough for our jars, you know? And uh, so, yeah, that's the thing, bro. And then we're dropping new products here and there. You know, I don't believe in oversaturating the market. I like being a little more exclusive and not having everything kind of knowing you're the best at this, you know, and then, and then coming up, there's brands come out. They're like, they have everything. They have the edibles, they have the, the, the vape pens, the, the, um, the flower, the, this, the, this pre-rolls. It's like too much. Sometimes, I mean, it could work for you. So to each his own. Yeah. Our style is different. We kind of specialize in things. And um, I've always want, we've had pre-rolls from day one, but they've been like the grammars and I've always wanted, I've always talked about doing the packs because I used to be a cigarette smoker like years ago and I always knew it was going there and I've been saying it, but we grew slow, like I said, uh, and everything has its time. Intentional. Yeah. Every, everything has its time and uh, we're now doing it. We have our proprietary packs we're doing eighths called we're calling it personals and it's an eighth rolled up for you of the premium nugs it ain't shake it ain't smalls it's actual what i do so i we have our cones right our, our branded cones i keep them at the house if i want to smoke i'll either roll myself a j of the buds you know I'll, I'll grind up buds or i'll pack a cone so i can have like a pack with me it's faster um so i'm giving what i use and people love it Anyone around me is like, hey, you got any of that? Yes, because they know it's nugs. It's like premium, premium stuff. It's not shake because a lot, I mean, 95%, 90% of pre-rolls out there are shake. I say or it's like infused. the hot dog market, bro. Yeah, it's like bro. like the leftover meats and this and that. And I don't like that. And that's casing. not going to be ours at all. Personals are going to be straight nugs, straight buds, exactly what I swear by and what I do. You know what I mean? And you know, because we kind of have a good reputation now. I haven't heard one negative ever about yeah. 22, you know? And I don't think you're going to start here. You know, Man, I'm bad. just I'm just envisioning a, I don't know if it's a music video, a promo, an episode of some sort, but you're just like, you know, at home or at the studio, like you pull out the jar and you're, you're rolling your cone. Maybe you're, you know, driving to the studio. I'm just like, uh, let me write this down. Hold on. You're giving me a shot. I list. love it, bro. I'm <laughs> giving you a shot. We'll, we'll produce something together. Um, I'd love I that, bro. It. Let me know. Cause I, I know you guys do great, great content and, uh, I watch you guys all the time. So, um, thank you. That could be the next thing we do together. I'd Let's love do that. It. And I'm, I'm actually going in the studio since I did the LAFC track. I said, why don't, why doesn't 22 have a track? You know what I'm saying? Why don't we? I mean, I'm a musician. I'm writing music. I'm inspired recently more than before. Why not? So I'm, 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 I'm kind of. I have a few producers I work with. So I'm asking for some beats and see where I can go with it. I could so see it's a, it's 22 the beginning Red of something. as a group, as a band, as a song, as like, like a, somewhere where music can come out. So yeah. Art, because we're art, bro. We feature also. We do this thing called um, Framed by 22, framed. where we put a frame around artists I like. Without okay. anything, we're not asking for nothing. We just kind of, if I find or know someone I really like and I want to, other people to know them, I think that inspires other artists to create. So I kind of fe uh, feature their work on our socials. I'll take, you know, their stuff and I'll show it. I'll show their videos. I'll show their art. I'll show their whatever they do. Any, yeah. any, any, any kind of creator, music, 
painting, video, whatever it is, right? So um, that's part of our mission is to inspire others by exposing some You're others, a curator, you know? like yeah. you said. Curator, yeah, of like art as well, you know, because... It's you know, all connected, right? Yeah, that's part of my me. Yeah, I love that. I mean, you oh, yeah. are... Uh, I think the the technical term, the 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 term is an aesthete, someone that really appreciates aesthetics. Um, yes. Good art, good music, good food. Good food, bro. Good movies. I mean, yeah, yeah. you all have it. it all. all and it. 22 yes. Red is kind of a platform for that. Yes, that's that, that was the initial vibe of the brand before it even turned to cannabis was, the, you know, curating what I love and what we love and and uh showing it to the masses you know yeah i love that would you consider 22 red a lifestyle brand i do i do we started off as just a it was going to be just a lifestyle brand like what we're talking about right now um but once the cannabis came in we kind of that became the majority of what we're doing uh we we have shirts and stuff but we're not selling a mass you know mass selling we have like each state we do certain designs for certain states you know each state which is also an art thing you know i kind of want i like when um you produce stuff geographically for that region and it makes it special for those people and then like people from elsewhere kind of want it you know what i'm saying it's mm -hmm. kind of creates that want the, the demand um and we've been doing that, but not selling it. We've been giving it away. We've sold only our like basic tees, but I'm now working with a few great artists and we're coming up with crazy designs, things I would wear, even if it wasn't 22 red, like you, sh you would like it because it's just cool. And we're going to start that process in the next month and a half. That's coming online. We started the whole page and we're just curating what designs we drop first. So you're going to be able to buy a lot of cool things made by artists not just like some dude doing graphic design but like actual artists creating art and putting it on our shirts and selling it you know and um i'm looking forward to seeing that happen i've been wanting to do that all there's a lot you want to do when you I have, I have ideas left and right oh, yeah. i have a guy that just takes my ideas down and like a <laughs> and make sure manager. like yeah i do i have that in 22 and in life um so th all this was thought out a long time ago it's just it's finally time to now do that you know it's like everything has its time like i said i thought of the pre-rolled packs four years ago we're just finally dropping them um it's just you know the time came that we can do it as a brand and we're doing it so the time came now that we can do merch again uh the right way not just like i said a graphic design of the logo on a shirt more of art on a shirt cool yeah and you know, can anyone get this merch from your website, like no matter where they're at in the world? We're going to launch it that way where we're going to do a Shopify page and it'll, it'll be global. Yeah. yeah we already started. It, the, the process began. It's like, a, I, I don't, I don't want to say two weeks, which is the plan is two weeks because what if something goes wrong? So I'm giving us a month. Yeah. You know, cause I know how things sometimes take a little longer than planned. Yeah. Well, wishful thinking on my end, but I, I wish, I hope there's a future where you can tour again and bring all these artists, these creators with you and That'd curate an experience, you know, not just going to a concert, but getting that feeling of that, you know, in the soccer arena or going through a, a curated collection of art. Um, it's, it's inspiring. And it would be so cool to have like a traveling experience around your vision, your interests, your passion. Actually, that's a good idea for the new projects I'm doing. Like, cause I am going to take those on the road and, um, I wouldn't mind doing a whole full encompassing art thing, you know, where in the lobby or wherever you can have some art as well. Yeah. So you're making music. You have an amazing three year anniversary that you're coming up on for 22 red you got a lot of projects. What's what's the next five years look like for you? More of the same, bro. Um, I've got a few um, ventures that I'm stepping into, uh, non-cannabis related, uh, that I'm excited about that I can't really mention. Uh, one is a Focus Energy drink that's, I think, really cool. Uh, it's all natural, very healthy for you, and I'll talk about it more when it's yes. ready to launch. It's something that I think is needed out there to compete with 
like a five hour energy that's really bad for you, something that's actually good I've for been you. Looking but for does, this. Yeah, well, it's 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 called Go All In, and it will be available within the next three four months. So we're just like I'll I'll know the date and we'll let you guys know and let everybody know and we can talk about it some more. Yeah. Um, but that's something I've been thinking about. You know, doing it quicker than later. Um. And just more music, bro, and just more more twenty two red, and getting it to once we build stronger in these three states, move into more states. I, we're already getting approached by a lot of different states, and I've been kind of I, I put the brakes on and said let's let's really set the foundation right in these three states before we spread ourselves too thin. Yeah, you know. So just th- that's that's my thing. I mean, more music, more shows. Um, more collaborations and uh more cannabis bro i mean that's my thing you know right now um i do have a family so i have to spend time with my kids a lot it's very important to me you can't have one without the other for me bro you know it's all a balance yeah i wouldn't be happy without any of these things one of them out of my life so i kind of want to keep them all in balance it's all about balance that's yeah right. you have to be good to yourself you got to stay healthy I, I work out daily eat better than i used to you know, we're all getting, you know, we're not getting younger, we're getting older. So we should kind of, when you change the way you eat and you behave, you feel actually younger. You know what I mean? Your, 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 your mind gets better. Your body gets better. It's all one, like we were talking earlier. So, um, yeah, I want to inspire people. I am going to write a book uh, about my life, about, cause my life is Let's interesting. Go. I've had a lot of experiences, the whole it's oh the American gosh. dream, kind of the American yes. dream, you know, like I'm I'm an immigrant who came here. Who, my parents brought me here because they wanted me to have the opportunities because there was none there. And um, I took that and ran. And uh, I think that it, it'd be inspiring for people to hear how it happened and do it themselves. It'll be good for kids and everybody else. I'm so, thinking so, documentary. TV show. But let's I mean, not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> uh, I kind of want to just write and like have it written. And if that goes somewhere, it does. But I really want to start with the way I started this interview with the genocide, like mm-hmm. how how things had to how if one thing was different, I wouldn't be here speaking to you. And that's life itself. But this is like I my people went through a genocide like a lot. Of, like, for example, there was the Holocaust that happened after. Same thing there. But we just didn't have as many people. We lost in ratio to people, we had way more people. We lost 75% of our people who went to different countries to escape what was happening. I think that's a great place to start my story because there's four people that survived that made my folks who made me. So that's crazy. So I want to tell the story of each and then go to me. So I think that's interesting. Yeah. What What would you tell your parents if you could go back in time to when you were five and over those six months where you guys were traveling and going through that time of suffering, what would you tell them? What would you share with them? Now, like as a, as an adult or as a five-year-old? Yeah. Now I'd say do what you did. Like they were seriously, they left everything behind, which is crazy to think like right now people are, you know, there's people are, are afraid to move out of their neighborhood, out of their comfort zone. These guys, left their country their life. To a, their life everything that they knew to better their kids lives and they came here with nothing worked two jobs each i remember this bro and my grandma i would go and they put me to private school with and we lived in a one bedroom apartment and they put me through private school because they wanted me to have the best education and not forget my culture and that's crazy bro cuz you know i might have not done things the same way if i was in that position but i really really put them on a pedestal and look up to them for that and i really thank them for that because at the time i didn't understand it that why are you, why am i going i want to go to public school like the rest of my friends and i realized what that did to me you know and how that taught me and kept my culture and my history right here you know right close to me and it's always something i talk about because it's important you know you sh- everyone should know their culture you know and um they taught me to grind bro you know because i didn't have all this i didn't have anything and I was content. I had a little skateboard. There's another thing I was really involved in skateboarding. I did that from four years old to 
well, five years old to 17, 18 years old, I would still think like a skater. When we tour or we're anywhere I drive, I see a curb. I'm like, oh, shit, you could <laughs> think of all the tricks you could do there. You know, just never leaves you. But um, I was content where I was, but I always liked to do more. And I was was very inspired little kid, you know, that was always getting into things. You know, there's so many stories I could tell you. But... Yeah. So what I would tell them is just do the same. Thank you. I would say thank you. That's what I would say. I would say bless you. Thank you for sacrificing so much for our well-being my well-being and then later on at 11 i had another i had a they had a little dad another kid so i so i wouldn't be an only child and i have a little brother you know which is cool inspire him help him out yeah you know what i'm saying absolutely and yeah but that's what i would say is thank you because they yeah. they sacrificed for me yeah huge shout out to all those parents out there in the world that are truly putting their children first, um, mm -hmm. helping them so achieve their dreams and, and putting them on the right track. I remember when I first started smoking at 12 and leading into wanting to grow and this and that, it wasn't always seen in my parents' eyes how I am today, you know? Of course not. It was music. As a bad Same thing, thing with music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were like, put it away, go to school, learn. And I was doing both, you know, just like you. I'm sure you did yeah. other things too, but you had a passion, you had a calling. Yeah, that's what that was. It's a calling. It doesn't happen to everybody. Yeah. You're blessed for having that calling. Absolutely. And and a yeah. final shout out to the grandmas of the world. The grandma mm -hmm. that bought you your first guitar. My grandma bought me my first stock in a business zoomies. Wow, um, that's amazing. In, in you Seattle. really you have zoomies. That wow. was that was the first stock at 13 years old. Um, that's amazing. So shout out to all those grandmas. Shout and out to the grandmas. There. Shout out to any you know. Yeah. Your, you know. The, the elders, the elders that yeah. made us who we are. Nowadays, it's a little different, you know. Yeah, I feel like we grew up in a different era, a different. I mean, it's always like that, but we got to bring it back. We got to celebrate yeah, it and, mm -hmm. and put them um, on high. But uh, yep. thank you so much for your time today, Shava. This is thanks a for blessing. having me, man. I appreciate you. you're a great so dude grateful. to talk to. Yeah, this was really fun. I appreciate it. Well, we'll we'll get some projects going together in the future. I can feel it. I'd love that, bro. Thank you. Oh yeah. Later. Hey, thanks for tuning in today on the Can of Cribs podcast. Brought to you by the top brands in the game. We have six categories you want to highlight to help you elevate your craft. Starting off with Cultivation by Grodan, Lighting by Horticulture Lighting Group, Nutrients by Athena, Climate Control by Quest, Post Harvest by Green Bros, and Dispensary by Trees. Thank you to these partners for helping us create this podcast and helping us bring more knowledge to your garden. If you want to support the Can of Cribs podcast, head on over to the link in the description or go to growershouse.com and check out these industry leaders today. And while you're there, hit us up on Instagram. Hit us up on the Growers Network Forum. We have thousands of growers all around the world on both our Instagram and our forum, just like you, looking to elevate their craft. Happy growing.